Deep within a quiet village, surrounded by thick, ancient forests, stood an old Haveli. It was a grand house, but it had seen better days. The walls were covered in moss, and the once beautiful place looked abandoned and forgotten. People in the village whispered about the Haveli, saying it was haunted and that there was a cursed well in its courtyard. The story of the well had been passed down through generations. It was said that the well had some kind of dark magic and strange and scary things happened around it. Locals believed that the Haveli was a place filled with fear and secrets. One day, a family from a nearby town came to live in the village. The Sharmas, as they were called, didn't know about the Haveli's spooky history. They thought the old house was interesting and decided to make it their new home. The family included Mr. and Mrs. Sharma and their two children, Raj and Aisha. At first, the Sharmas liked their new home. It had an old-fashioned charm that appealed to them. But as time went on, strange things began to happen. At night, they heard weird sounds like crying or moaning. Objects went missing and reappeared in strange places. Even their dog, Max, refused to go into the courtyard. The Sharmas tried to explain these odd happenings as coincidences, but they couldn't ignore them for long. The creepy events kept getting worse. One night, they were all woken up by the sound of someone crying. Mr. Sharma, who was usually very logical, decided to investigate. He took a flashlight and went into the courtyard. In the dim light of the courtyard, Mr. Sharma saw something that made his blood run cold, the cursed well. It was different from any well he'd ever seen. Strange symbols were carved into the stones and a cold, eerie mist hung over it. Fear gripped him, and he rushed back to his family, determined to leave the Haveli behind. But the Haveli had other plans. As the Sharmas packed their things, it seemed like the very walls of the house were against them. Doors slammed shut by themselves, and whispers filled the air. They were trapped, and it was clear that the Haveli didn't want to let them go. In a state of desperation, the Sharmas sought the help of a local priest. He was an elderly man who knew a lot about the supernatural. The priest arrived at the Haveli and began a special ritual to cleanse it. He chanted prayers and sprinkled holy water, but the Haveli fought back. Shadows moved on their own and a cold wind swept through the rooms. The most intense part of the ritual took place at the cursed well. The priest approached it carefully, his prayers growing stronger. Suddenly, a ghostly figure rose from the well, a spirit with empty eyes and outstretched arms. The priest continued his prayers, his voice unwavering, and slowly the ghostly figure started to fade away. With the evil spirit banished, the Sharmas felt an immense sense of relief. The Haveli, once filled with darkness, started to calm down. The family eventually left the place, grateful to the brave priest who had saved them from the haunted well. Over the years, the Haveli remained empty and its scary reputation stayed intact. Villagers still stayed away from it, sharing stories about the Sharmas and the priest who had faced the spooky force in the old house. The cursed well, though now silent, continued to be a mystery and a source of fear, reminding everyone of the strange things that could happen within the Haveli's ancient walls. Once upon a time, in a small village surrounded by lush, ancient forests, there stood a Haveli, a grand mansion of days long past. This particular Haveli was unlike any other in the village. It was said to be haunted and its library held secrets and mysteries that no one dared to explore. The story began with a man named Ramesh, a book lover and scholar who had dedicated his life to the pursuit of knowledge. Ramesh had heard rumors of the Haveli's haunted library and the ancient texts it contained. His curiosity got the better of him and he decided to investigate. 
Ramesh's arrival in the village caused quite a stir. The villagers warned him about the Haveli and its eerie reputation, but Ramesh was undeterred. He believed that knowledge was worth any risk. Armed with a lantern and a notebook, he entered the Haveli one moonless night. Inside, the Haveli was a labyrinth of dusty corridors and dark rooms. The air was heavy with the scent of old books and the weight of forgotten history. As Ramesh ventured deeper, he stumbled upon a hidden door concealed behind a heavy tapestry. Beyond it lay the Haveli's renowned library. The library was a sight to behold. Ancient books lined the shelves, their leather-bound covers bearing titles written in languages long forgotten. Dusty manuscripts and scrolls filled every available space. Ramesh couldn't contain his excitement, he felt like he had discovered a treasure trove of knowledge. As he began to explore the library, he noticed that some books seemed to beckon to him, their pages flipping open of their own accord. Ramesh couldn't resist the temptation and started reading. The books contained tales of forgotten civilizations, ancient rituals, and hidden realms. They revealed secrets that had been buried for centuries. However, as the night wore on, Ramesh realized that something was amiss. The lantern's flame flickered unnaturally, casting eerie shadows that danced along the walls. Whispers filled the air, and a cold breeze sent a shiver down his spine. It became clear that the Haveli's library was not as it seemed. The books held a dark magic that had ensnared him. The room transformed before his eyes, its shelves stretching endlessly and the passages leading to unknown depths. Ramesh was trapped and the library's cursed texts began to torment him. Days turned into weeks and Ramesh grew gaunt and weary. The library played tricks on his mind, distorting reality and making him question his sanity. The voices of the Haveli's previous visitors echoed in his ears, their desperate pleas for release haunting his dreams. Back in the village, rumors of Ramesh's disappearance spread like wildfire. The villagers knew of the Haveli's dark history and feared that Ramesh had fallen victim to its malevolent power. They mourned his loss, never daring to enter the Haveli themselves. But hope arrived in the form of a determined young woman named Priya. She had heard of Ramesh's quest for knowledge and his subsequent disappearance. Priya believed that she could free him from the Haveli's clutches. Priya sought the guidance of an elderly sage known for his wisdom and knowledge of ancient rituals. The sage agreed to help her, and together they ventured into the Haveli, determined to break the curse and rescue Ramesh. As they entered the library, they could feel the oppressive energy that hung in the air. The cursed books seemed to resist their presence, but Priya and the sage pressed on. The sage chanted ancient incantations and sprinkled holy water while Priya held a lantern to guide their way. As the rituals continued, the library fought back, unleashing illusions and dark forces. But Priya's determination and the sage's unwavering faith prevailed. In a blinding burst of light, the curse was broken and the Haveli's malevolent presence lifted. Ramesh, weak and disoriented, was finally freed from the library's grip. He emerged with Priya and the sage, his eyes filled with gratitude. The cursed books were left behind, their dark secrets sealed once more. As the years passed, the village continued to speak of Ramesh's ordeal as a cautionary tale. The Haveli remained abandoned, its library a symbol of the dangers that lurked within its walls. Ramesh, though forever changed by his experience, had learned a valuable lesson about the pursuit of knowledge and the importance of heeding warnings. Priya's bravery and the sage's wisdom served as a reminder of the strength that could be found in facing the unknown. In a quiet village nestled amidst the tranquil countryside, there stood an old Haveli, a grand mansion from a time long past. This Haveli was renowned for its intricate statues that adorned its courtyard. However, these statues held a chilling secret, a malevolence that would haunt the village for generations. The story began with a curious boy named Aman. 
Amon had grown up listening to the eerie tales of the Haveli statues, but he was undeterred by the superstitious warnings. He was drawn to the statue's beauty and mystique. One bright morning, his curiosity got the better of him, and he decided to explore the Haveli's courtyard. The statues were indeed magnificent. Crafted from the finest stone, they depicted warriors, gods, and mythical creatures. Amon marveled at their lifelike details and intricate designs. However, as he reached out to touch one of the statues, a shiver ran down his spine. He sensed an unnatural presence, a malevolence lurking beneath their stony facades. Ignoring his instincts, Amon continued to visit the Haveli's courtyard, day after day. He became enthralled by the statues, feeling an inexplicable connection to them. At night, he would dream of the statues coming to life, their stone eyes filled with malice. As weeks turned into months, strange occurrences began to unfold in the village. Crops withered, livestock fell ill, and people started to experience unexplainable misfortunes. The villagers, who had long feared the Haveli statues, grew increasingly anxious. Amon's family, too, fell victim to the mysterious malevolence. His parents fell ill, and their once joyful home became shrouded in sorrow. Amon couldn't bear to see his family suffer, and he began to suspect that the statues were the cause of their woes. One night, unable to sleep, Amon ventured into the Haveli's courtyard once more. As he stood among the statues, he heard a faint whisper, a voice filled with anguish. It was as though the statues were trying to communicate with him, to tell him their story. Amon listened, and the statues revealed their tragic tale. They had been crafted by a gifted sculptor centuries ago, who had poured his heart and soul into each masterpiece. However, the sculptor had been betrayed by a jealous rival, who had cursed the statues, binding their spirits to the stone for eternity. Touched by their plight, Amon made a promise to the statues. He vowed to break the curse and free them from their stone prison. With the statue's guidance, he embarked on a quest to seek the wisdom of a wise old sage rumored to have knowledge of ancient rituals and magic. The journey was perilous, but Amon's determination never wavered. He finally reached the sage's remote dwelling and pleaded for his help. The sage, recognizing the sincerity in Amon's eyes, agreed to assist him. Together, Amon and the sage returned to the Haveli's courtyard, where the statues awaited their arrival. The sage performed a sacred ritual, chanting incantations and sprinkling holy water over the statues. As he did so, a dark, malevolent force emerged from the statues, fighting against their liberation. Amon's heart raced, but he stood his ground, his determination unwavering. He joined the sage in the ritual, channeling all his energy into breaking the curse that bound the statues. The battle between light and darkness raged on, and it seemed as though the malevolence would prevail. In a final, desperate moment, Amon and the sage summoned all their strength. With a blinding burst of light, the curse shattered, and the statue's malevolent spirits were released. Amon's heart swelled with relief as he watched the statue's stony expression soften into gratitude. With the curse broken, the village began to heal. Crops flourished, animals thrived, and the people's misfortunes gradually faded away. Amon's family, too, regained their health and happiness, and the village rejoiced. As for the statues, they remained in the Haveli's courtyard, no longer malevolent but instead guardians of the village. Their once chilling presence now served as a reminder of the power of compassion and determination in the face of darkness. Amon had learned that beauty could mask hidden malevolence, but it was through understanding and kindness that even the most malevolent forces could be transformed. The Haveli statues, once feared and dreaded, became a symbol of hope and redemption, a testament to the enduring power of the human spirit.